This is probably Tom Brady's final season. I know we've been saying that for years now, but with him retiring last year, coming out of retirement, and not doing super amazing this year, this is probably it. So today, we're gonna reflect that, and we're gonna rebuild the Buccaneers without Tom Brady. But absolutely massive shout out to Rowlett for the suggestion. Definitely go drop them a sub. Their link is in the description. I have already done so. And of course, if you want a shout out just like that one, all you got to do is let me know what team to do next. You don't necessarily have to do it for like seven days in a row like they did, but if you really want me to, that will probably get me to do it. So just be sure to let me know what team to do next. And I'll sub to you, give you a shout out if I pick your comment, of course. But thank you guys so much for 1900 subs. We're already at 19. 1930 or something like that. So let's shoot for 2,000 subs on this video. We can absolutely do it. It's crazy. We hit 1K like a month ago, and now we've already almost doubled that. So I am so thankful for all of you who have subbed. Be sure to do it, and it'll make you an OG of the channel. And also, let's shoot for 200 likes on this video. The likes and everything have been insane. Imagine if everyone did it, we would be at like 2,000 likes or more. And you are part of that, everyone. So if you do it, we will hit it. So be sure to do it. But last thing, be sure to turn on notifications if you want to be one of the first people to ever see my videos right after they come out and it will guarantee that you never miss one of my videos so be sure to do that but this was an extremely fun rebuild it started off very weak but we built an insane roster this might be the best team we have ever built so i hope you enjoy and let's get into today's rebuild Hello everyone, it is Brandon the Limp here. I've been trying to come up with words that rhyme with simp and I'm already out after like two videos, but I am joined by Mikey McDingle, of course, the goat, and we're gonna be rebuilding the Tampa Bay Buccaneers without Tom Brady. So, goodbye, good old Tommy boy, and hello Kyle Trask. This should be fun, <laughs> but obviously this team won a Super Bowl just a couple years ago, so I mean they're good going by the rule. They're good for the next five years. They can suck for the next five years. And they're slowly trending in that direction. I mean, this is not a necessarily young roster with Leonard Fournette, Mike Evans, Donovan Smith, Ryan Jensen, even Shaq Mason is getting up there. Cameron Brait, obviously Tom Brady. That kind of goes without saying. Defensively, Levante David, Shaq Barrett, Akeem Hicks. Like this team is slowly trending in the direction of needing a rebuild. So today we're going to live in a post Tom Brady world and try to fix the Buccaneers. Now, I'm gonna do this one unrealistically, but I want y'all to let me know. Do you prefer realistic or unrealistic for rebuilds? Because I like doing either. I've just been wanting to switch it up lately because I did so many realistic rebuilds in a row. Like, I want to do some unrealistic. And maybe you don't have a preference. I don't know, but I know there are some people who really don't care for either side. So just let me know. But like I said, unrealistic. So let's get into some trades and let's see what we can do with this team. So first trade out of the way, it's going to be Donovan Smith, Julio Jones, and Cam Brait to the Raiders for a 2 and a 4. All older players will not be a long-term option for this rebuild. Donovan Smith has looked much worse with Ollie Marpet gone. Julio Jones obviously regressing, injured all the time, and Cameron Brait regressing as well. We're basically getting a second and a fourth for free because these players will not be on the team next year and we're not going to be competitive this year. So it's, it's basically free picks. This is an interesting trade. It's gonna be Leonard Fournette and Akeem Hicks to the Bears for a 2, a 4, and a 5. I don't know why they're interested in Leonard Fournette. They have David Montgomery. They have Khalil Herbert. I don't really understand it. And then Akeem Hicks is going back to the Bears after spending part of a year in Tampa Bay. Again, both just older players. We don't need them. And we're adding a lot of draft capital, so I love it. And I think this is the last trade we're gonna be doing, but it will be Carl Nassib, Logan Ryan, and Giovanni Bernard for a two and a seven from the Saints. I almost said Buccaneers. You know, Carl Nassib, nothing of note to say about him. Couldn't, couldn't really think of anything. Um, no, you know, first open gay NFL player. You know, it's cool. A lot of NFL fans are kind of homophobic, so it is what it is. I don't know, man. And then Logan Ryan, I do like him a lot in real life, but already 30, kind of a backup here, so just adding even more weapons to that Saints secondary. And then Giovanni Bernard, you know, was pretty good at one point, just kind of old now. 
and I want to get Rashad White starting. Okay, so I I realized I'm stupid, and I told someone I would remember to use the trade finder for when I'm trading players, obviously. I forgot that this game is stupid, and they don't offer picks. They only offer garbage players. So, I mean, I'm not I'm not too mad that I didn't use it, honestly. Because, I mean, Amani R. Warrior for Kyle Ruta, I might take that. That's not bad. This is a weird start to the rebuild. I'm sorry, but like, yeah, fuck it. Let's use the trade finder for a tiny trade. Let's get Amani or Warrior to be our fourth corner for Kyle Rudolph. I'm fine with it. Kenneth Murray? I feel like this is cheesing it. I don't know if I want to do this. Would they really trade a former first round pick just after like two years for a depth player? I don't think they would. You know what? They're offering it. I'll take it. We'll take Kenneth Murray, I guess. He'll be our third linebacker. Could eventually be a starter if Levante David really regresses, but I'll take it. Why not? Here is a look at the team going into year number one of the rebuild. Obviously, you know, a bit of a jarring roster to look at. We'll just say that because, I mean, we have players like 82 overall, 85 overall, 92 overall, 88, 89. And then we also have players that are a 62, a 69, a 67. <laughs> so our players are either really good or really bad. <laughs> the only one kind of in between is Russell Gage. And I feel like I haven't talked enough about this defense. It's a pretty solid defense. I mean, Jamel Dean has been really good. Antoine Winfield, Levante David, Shaq Barrett when healthy. I mean, he's normally healthy. He was just hurt this last year. Vita Vey, a bit of a down year, but normally is one of the best interior D linemen in the league. Like, this is also a very strong defense with some really good players. Some really underrated players, honestly. But with that, let's get to the midseason point of year number one. Ooh, okay. This is actually kind of huge. Vita Vea hit a breakout and now has X Factor. Now, I'm pretty sure we still got smoked. I don't want to show what our record is so far because we aren't at the midseason yet, but at least that's one positive of the season. Okay, well, not the greatest season so far. We are two and five, but to be fair, I mean, we've traded most of the team away. It's not about this year. It's about next year and the year after that and maybe the year after that, but Kyle Trask is doing okay. I mean, as you would hope because this playbook is busted. 2,000 yards, 15 touchdowns, eight picks. Not terrible, honestly. 59% completion percentage isn't good though, so I don't know. Rashad White is not doing well. Lots of receiving yards so far, of course. Probably a ton of sacks. Yeah, Luke Godecki already with eight, like a third of the way through the season. Vita Vey is doing very well. Devin White getting interceptions, which is interesting. But yeah, so far, not much to really look at. Just a very developmental team. We have a wide receiver breakout, though. Who's this gonna be? Is it gonna be Chris Godwin or Russell Gage? I don't know. Chris Godwin, okay. Four touchdowns or 200 receiving yards. I don't know about that. Four touchdowns is a, ri a little ridiculous, but you never know. And then a short week scenario. We'll see what this one is. Obviously, I'm not reading all that, bruh. Just give me to the fucking... <laughs> Beat the Ravens and allow two or fewer offensive touchdowns. I don't think our defense is great, so I don't know about that, but we'll see. And then for re-signings, what do we want to do here? Ooh, Levante David. There are actually some kind of big re-signings here. Levante David, I definitely do want back. It's only two years. He shouldn't regress too much. I bet by the end of the year, or by the end of year number three, he would be down to like a 79. I bet by the end, or going into year number two, I bet he'll be down to like an 84. So it's still good. We'll offer him that and he takes it. Okay, beautiful. Been one of the more underrated linebackers in the league for a long time now. Jamel Dean, he's actually really expensive, but this is worth it. I mean, he's a really good corner. Four years, it's close to 20 mil a year. It's like 18 something, 18 and a half, or no, 16 and a half. I can't do math. Let's let's see if he takes it, and he does. Okay, that's actually not too bad of a deal, 16 and a half mil per year. I don't know why, I just can't math. I'm fucking tired today. Plus, I'm stupid, so doesn't help. Sean Murphy bunting, five years, good lord, but I do like him. It's like nine-ish mil per year. Let's see if he takes it, and he does. And then Mike Edwards, he's only a 76 overall. He's already 26. I'm not gonna re-sign him yet, but if he has a good year or develops a little more, I will re-sign him. And then outside of that, there are a ton of contracts, but these are ones we're gonna have to worry about later. So let's get to the end of year number one. I might have to go through these games one by one more, because we hit another breakout. We got Logan Hall. I mean, I kind of feel like he should have had a star dev to be begin with anyways, because I mean, he was a highly regarded player. I mean, it was a very weak defensive tackle class, but he was considered like the best one from it. 
20,000 XP is ridiculous though. That's kind of, it's kind of overkill. That seems a little busted. I'm actually curious though, what does that get him up to? Oh, just a casual five upgrades. <laughs> you know, no biggie. Now up to a 74 overall. Good Lord. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> at the end of year number one, we finish two and 15. Not ideal. You know, this was a pretty decent roster before. It still is. We're in 83 overall. I, I don't know about two and 15. The Texans made the playoffs at nine and eight. This game is something. Kyle Trask wasn't even necessarily the problem. I mean, if you in ignore the interceptions, 4,800 yards, 33 touchdowns is very good. And then like 18, 18 interceptions, 58% completion percentage, not, not great, but overall better than what you would expect for Kyle Trask. Rashad White didn't do much, but to be fair, it is a very run light scheme. Like it's a very passing, pass heavy offense. Had 39 yards per game, 3.4 yards per carry. I mean, even on his own, he wasn't good, but especially because of the scheme, he was bad. Receiving, we had three 1,000 yard receivers. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Cade Otten as a rookie. So I definitely don't think we need to draft a tight end. It was one of my like focus positions, but we don't really need it. And then Russell Gage with 850 yards as well. Mike Evans had a monster year. Blocking was very terrible, but that's kind of what you would expect. Luke Odecki allowing 18 sacks as a rookie. I don't think he would be quite that bad if he had to start at tackle, but he's been pretty terrible at guard, which I don't, I don't know why they're playing him at guard, but whatever. Devin White led the team with 167 tackles. Where does that rank in the league? I mean, that's accurate. He had the most tackles in the league. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I don't mean to make Bucks fans mad, but that's about all he's good for. He's not my favorite player in the league. I mean, I'm sure he's a good person, but not a great player in my opinion. Carlton Davis had 102 tackles. Tackle, oh my god. 25 tackles for loss from Vita Vea. 20 from Shaquille Barrett, which I see something there that I'll get to in a second. 15 from Logan Hall as a rookie. 12 from Deidre Sinat, and 11 from Joe Tryon. That's something. And for sacks, 11 and a half from Vita Vea led the team. Only four and a half from Shaquille Barrett, and only two from Joe Tryon Shoyinka. I, is that how you say his last name? I mean, he obviously went by Joe Tryon to begin with, and then Joe Tryon Shoyinka. I don't know. No disrespect, but it's a little bit of a goofy last name. Devin White and Levante David, the two linebackers, led the team in interceptions with four, two from what the hell? Mans had almost as many interceptions as sacks as a pass rusher. Love to see that. Carlton Davis with two and Mike Edwards with two and then a number of players with one. So we had some really good individual performances and then we had some really terrible ones. So I'm a little confused, but it is what it is. MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes, of course, who would have guessed? No Buccaneers in here, unsurprisingly. I mean, maybe you could see a Kyle Trask, but way too many interceptions. Way too low of a completion percentage. Offensive player of the year, the white boy Cooper Cup. Haven't gotten to say that in a little while, so good to be back in the NFC. Mike Evans at number nine. You love to see that at the very least. Defensive player of the year goes to Micah Parsons. The other white boy coming in at number two. Devin White at number nine. Makes sense. Led the league in tackles, which not an important stat, but it is what it is. Drake London wins offensive rookie of the year. Kate Otten at number three. No, I didn't even think of him, but yeah, he definitely could have won that. We should check what Drake London did to see if it was actually better than Kate Otten, but Kate Otten was very good. Rashad White at number eight. Defensive rookie of the year goes to Aiden Hutchinson. Logan Hall at number five. Love to see that. Oh wait, I wonder if Kyle Trask was up there for best QB, actually. I want to I wanna check that. Okay, no, he's not, unfortunately, but would have been fun. Okay, I don't know if it's just my rosters or anything, which if you want my custom rosters, go and download them. Uh, PC only, unfortunately, but they're called like Brandon Updated. The name or whatever is Brandon A23021. Go download them if you want them. They're the rosters I use, but the Saints are like really good in them for some reason, and I don't know why. They're in the Super Bowl here. They lose to the Bills 38-31, but it's weird that they're in the Super Bowl. I mean, they have a good roster, so it makes sense, but like, are they Super Bowl good? I mean, yeah, it is a pretty, really good roster. They just have a lot of injuries in real life, but kind of makes sense. Also, let me know who your prediction is to win the Super Bowl. Mine is the Bills. I think they'll be extra motivated for DeMar Hamlin, obviously. I think the best team is probably the Chiefs. My Super Bowl, like, prediction is Chiefs for, or Bills 49ers, but I think the Bills do take down the Chiefs just because. You know what I mean? But I don't know. It's it's hard to say who the best team really is. But now we're in the offseason, and we have some re-signings to make. Let's see who we want back. There are a ton of players here. So probably the main one is Mike Edwards. How was he this year? Was he 
good? If he was good, I'll bring him back. If not, then we can find someone else. Two picks, two tackles for loss, good amount of tackles, only three deflections, 48 catches allowed. You know, it wasn't bad, but I feel like we could easily upgrade there. And if we want him back, we can just resign him in for agency. Plus, he's not interested, so yeah, we might let him walk. Deidre and Sanat was surprisingly decent, but just a lot of tackles for loss. I feel like it was a scheme thing. I feel like we're honestly fine letting most players go here. I'll shoot Amani Arwarie an offer. Okay, he does take it. Just because he has that dev trait and we got him from a trade. I mean, everyone else here is just kind of a depth piece. I'd rather spend that money on actual starters. So that's all we're going to do here. Let's get into free agency. So honestly, in free agency, I don't really know what to do. Our main needs are like left tackle, but there's really nobody here for us. We could go like Andre Dillard, but I don't really want to. Plus he's eight mil to probably be bad. So I'll definitely pass. There just aren't that many good linemen. I don't necessarily trust Juwan Taylor to be good. Plus not a scheme fit. I know Terrence Steele is bad in this game, at least when I've gotten him. There aren't really many interior offensive linemen that make sense either. Like we could go Nate Davis, but he's much more of a run blocker than anything. So like the opposite of our scheme. And the other thing we need is pass rush. And there isn't really much pass rush here. There aren't many good players. We could go for Marcus Davenport, but he's very hit or miss. And I don't really trust him. Well, I don't know. Where would player friendly put us? It would tie us for the lead with the Patriots and Texans. That's certainly a list of teams. You got Tom Brady's two teams, and then you got the goddamn Houston Texans. Oh yeah, and the other player I'm offering for is gonna be Mike Evans. Nope, that's not who this is, Mike Edwards. <laughs> We're gonna try to bring him back. There wasn't really another option there. The only other one was Ronnie Harrison, and he has a lot of interest from the Broncos. We could act, we, we could go for good old CD Deuce. How, do, how are we feeling about that? You know what? Let's try it. That ties us for the lead. We'll see. If he doesn't accept, it's not the end of the world. We still have the draft. We still have many other years to look forward to. So let's see if either of these two sign. Both former Saints. That's interesting. So it looks like C CJ Gardner Johnson does sign with us. That's huge. And we're still tied for the lead on Marcus Davenport. Let's see if he signs. Still hasn't decided, but still tied for the lead. Obviously now the Raiders and Ravens are interested. It looks like he signs probably not with us. Okay, not with us, but I am very much okay with getting CJ Gardner Johnson. And before we get into the draft, what do we want to do here? Like, like what's going to be the plan going into the draft? We definitely want a QB. That's obvious. Kyle Trask was not great and is only a 66 overall. So definitely want a QB, maybe even a running back, probably a lineman or two or three, probably a defensive lineman. Outside of that, our defense is pretty good. Maybe a pass rusher though. Like we definitely have some holes on this team, but there is something I want to do. This offensive line was terrible and I actually want to make a trade. Ryan Jensen is already 32. By the end of next year, he'll be down into the 70s and he allowed six sacks as a center. I think we could definitely ship him off for a pick. You know what? I'll do the, hold on. I'll do the trade finder thing. It's just going to offer me players. I'm not going to want any of these. It's still interesting to see though. Juju, that wouldn't be bad. That's not realistic because they literally just signed him, but whatever. Uchenna Nwosu, that's not bad. John Mechie. I mean, these are just weird. I don't want to take these. It makes me feel dirty. You know what I mean? It makes me feel like a dirty, a dirty boy. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm not going to do that. We'll trade him straight up though. The Giants literally don't have a center. <laughs> okay. Well, that works. We get a second round pick for Ryan Jensen. I'll definitely take that. Maybe not smart to trade away an offensive lineman when our line already sucks, but he was bad anyways. So we're not really losing anything there. And we have a fifth year for Tristan Wirfs. Now he isn't the the best in this game. We'll just say that, but it's definitely worth it. He's one of the best tackles in the NFL. Maybe the best right tackle outside of Lane Johnson? I don't know. They're kind of like 1A, 1B, so we'll obviously pick that up. And we have another one. Wait, who's this one? Is it? Oh, Kenneth Murray. No, I'm not paying him a shit ton of money to be a backup. I'll pass. Hold on. I've asked this in a video before. Is that how it works? If a player gets traded, do they still get the fifth year from the team that traded for them? I thought it just gets kind of 
deleted, but maybe it's a thing. No, it would make sense that it's a thing because it doesn't just disappear from their contract. I don't know. I should know that. I think I said that last time I talked about it. I just don't for some reason because I'm stupid. <laughs> Dude, this happens literally every single time we have the number one overall pick. It just doesn't process in my brain that that could be a possibility. I think we were literally two and 15. I just didn't even think, oh, hey, we might have the number one overall pick, but we do. So we could do literally anything here. What do we even want to do? I definitely want to go QB, but Joseph Shields does look like the best QB available. I mean, well, he, he is factually. I mean, he is a round one talent. Alex Pierce is a one to two. All these other guys are like two to three and he's a scheme fit. But does Alex Pierce look interesting? He's 22. He's fast and really strong. Okay. He looks interesting. Um, I think I'll still go Shields because he is a higher overall and a scheme fit, but I do want to trade down. Just one pick though. Did the Lions send us an offer? Let me see. No, the Lions didn't give us an offer. Ooh, because if I trade down with the Panthers, the Panthers and Lions are two teams that could take QB. So I, I don't know if I want to trade down then. Okay, yeah, the Lions still have Jared Goff at like a 72 overall. They would definitely take a QB. And then Panthers, wow, they have a lot of QBs, but I still feel like they would take why do they have so many players they have Jamie Newman who I really liked coming out Matt Corral who I also like coming out Jordan Love who I also liked coming out they have Jimmy Garoppolo Jacoby Brissett why <laughs> they're having like a four-way quarterback competition I mean hey if one of those players don't hit then you're doing something wrong but I still feel like they could take a QB so I'm not even gonna bother with trading down I don't want to risk it suddenly nothing is loading this is super cool let's just go Joseph Shields I I hope he has a dev trait. Oh my God, I knew it. Okay, that actually really sucked. He looks decent, 91 throw power, 78 speed, 84 change of direction, but having no dev trait really does suck. But we're in a broken system. He could just gain one after year one. He more than likely will. It, it just would have been better if he at least had star. Now, it's not necessarily a good sign if a player falls a little bit past their range. Well, I guess this guy isn't technically past his range because I mean, we're like dead in the middle of his range he's a first to second round talent we're the first pick in the second round but this guy looks very interesting he's 6'4 314 22 years old out of Wisconsin a right tackle Mr. Byron Foreskin was very good at the combine has elite acceleration agility speed and great strength I'm surprised it's not elite it was second for right tackles with 37 he is an athletic freak ran a 497 at the combine as well has a awareness impact block lead block pass block finesse run block finesse just isn't a good pass blocker but also has a pass block finesse so it's a little confusing so he's not technically a scheme fit because he isn't a pass blocker but most like his two other pass blocking stats are decent so uh, i don't know let's take him another normal dev i kind of just had that feeling it's just one of those drafts huh two promising looking players and they both have normal either way though looks like a decent player 90 strength 75 speed 78 jumping 86 excel is kind of ridiculous i feel like they give linemen too high of acceleration like I don't know it's kind of weird but he looks like a pretty good player at the very least I definitely want a def Ooh, wait this guy looks really good okay I think with this pick I think it's what round two pick eight yeah we're gonna go Jeff Glover it's technically a reach because he's a third to fourth round projection but he looks so good he's 6'2 291 21 years old the funny number left-handed just like me for real out of Texas ran a 477 at the combine as a defensive tackle 33 reps on the bench so he's fast and strong has b awareness b block shed b tackle a finesse moves probably good pursuit looks like a really good player gonna have normal dev i can almost guarantee you that but let's take him okay finally thank god we hit a hidden dev so he'll start for us at what right defensive end and that looks like a really good value pick how many second round picks do we have we still have three more this ricky sawyer guy looks really good what's his speed why has nobody taken him oh he's gonna be so ass i already know it there's just gonna be one stat that's like zero overall for him and he's gonna suck but literally nothing about him looks bad the only thing concerning is his catching he has good speed really good strength really good speed actually he ran a 436 at his pro day which was only ninth somehow b deep 
deep route spec catch, release, C medium route catching, so he looks like a big body deep threat. It looks like DK Metcalf light or some shit. Let's take him. Hidden dev? Why is he still available? Why? Nobody wanted him? It's like that fucking, fucking picture, like, who want me and it's 100% no, you know what I'm talking about? That's him, but it would be like 1%, because I want you, Ricky. I want you. That sounds really gay. <laughs> let's just move on. Ooh, Zach Cummings. Speaking of gay, let's go. He actually looks pretty good, too. Ooh, he has no power. No run blocking. Still doesn't look bad, though. Oh, but this guy looks really good. Marlon Sutherland. That's a kind of goofy name. He's 6'4", 312. This is one of the players I focus scouted 21 years. Why is everyone 21 and left-handed? Why are there so many lefties? I'm the only lefty that's allowed to exist. Decent enough speed, I guess. I mean, it's second for right guards. There's some slow right guards, apparently, because that's not that good a speed. Pretty strong, really good combine. Was first for almost everything. Elite acceleration, change of direction, jumping. It's interesting. He has a lot of A's. He has three A's, maybe even A awareness, few B's. He looks really good. He's gonna have probably normal. Could have a hidden dev, but probably normal. Let's take him. And he does have normal 69 speed. Nice. And was he wearing number 69 or am I tripping? Hold on. I saw it like last frame, last second. I hope he was, but I don't know. I've taken so many picks in this draft, but I still feel like we have needs. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Nope, it's not letting me see it again. Jaleel Spencer, or Spencer, what the fuck? Webster, why did I? Say, was there someone else named Spencer? I don't think so. I'm just fucking stupid. But this guy looks intriguing. I don't think the all B's and A are true, but if they are, this guy could be ridiculous. A awareness and pursuit, maybe even A zone, A to C, has good speed, solid strength, 37.2 inch vertical jump, 6993 cone, nice. Wishes 20 yard shuttle was 0.03 lower, because I'm super mature. This guy looks good, let's take him. Hidden dev? We're finding all kinds of gems, dude. That guy looks really good. I should have went over his stats more, but I'm stupid, so I didn't. This might be, I don't want to call it early, but this seems like one of the better draft classes I've had in a while. It started off kind of rough, but it's feeling nice now. Like your mother. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, this guy's confusing. He's... Oh no, I clicked the wrong guy. Okay, never mind. Okay, with the last pick I'm gonna take, we're gonna go with the GOAT, Zach Cummings. He's 6'1", 290, already 23 years old, so not great. Another left. Why are there so many left-handed players in these draft classes? They shouldn't make it like 50-50. They should make it like what percentage of the population is left-handed. It shouldn't be like 50-50 or whatever they do. I know they're lazy, but it's kind of weird. It's kind of like annoying. <laughs> I want to be the only one is what I'm saying. Um, he looks okay. He's not super strong or fast, but somehow like, top five-ish for like everything. Probably just because there aren't many centers. Honestly, doesn't even look good, but I don't care. Let's take him. Hidden Dev. Okay, maybe he is good. Maybe I was wrong. Plus, he has a funny last name. Yeah, this is definitely one of the better draft classes we've ever had, Um, which there's especially one pick I'll get to in a minute. But Joseph Shields is a 75. He is definitely not bad at all. Really good medium accuracy. Really good awareness for a rookie. So this is just apparently a pro-ready QB. Solid throw pass. Everything just looks solid. There's nothing really good about him other than the medium accuracy, but it, everything is just solid. Looks like a really good play. Byron Foreman is a 75 overall, which is definitely higher than I thought he would be. 90 strength, good run blocker, really good lead block, good awareness. I feel like rookies kind of have too high of awareness. Like, they literally have not been in the league before. They shouldn't have. I, I don't know. It's whatever. Jeff Glover is much lower of an overall than I thought he was. He was only a 71, only a 70 at defensive end, but but good speed, good strength, just looks very athletic, should develop into a good player. Hopefully he can get one of those like mentor rookie things, maybe like Vita Vea will mentor him, I don't know, we'll see. Or like a camp standout or whatever. Ricky Sawyer's only a 72, but he does look very good. 91 speed, 89 excel, good catching, even decent route running, especially for a big body guy. He's not quite as fast as I thought he would be with 91 speed, I thought it would be more like 92, 93, but it's still fine. Looks like a good player. I don't know if we're going to be able to get him on the field, but we'll see. Marlon Sutherland, he'll just start at left guard. Nothing too of note of him. Good strength, good lead block. But this, this guy, Jaleel Webster, is one of the better value players I've ever taken. He is a 76 overall with hidden dev. 91 speed, 88 excel. Honestly, doesn't even look that good. I'm going to be honest. 75 zone, but for some reason, he's a 76 overall. I don't really understand it, but I definitely won't complain. We'll say that. 
And then the last we the last pick we took was Zach Cummings. He's a lot higher of an overall than I thought he would be. I thought he would be like a 69 overall, which would have been nice, of course, but he's a 74. He's gonna start us start for us at center. Really good pass blocking center. Not the best uh run blocker in the world, but that's fine. We're a very pass heavy system, so I mean if the game was realistic and actually, you know, pass blockers did well in pass protection, it would be nice, but he'll probably allow 10 sacks. So I don't know. We'll see, man. But he definitely looks like a good player. And then, of course, as soon as we stop picking 65 overall, six, like the CPU did nothing. It picked a 68 overall safety, but we had already taken a safety. So we should have just kept picking, but it is what it is, man. That was a really, really good draft class. So I don't think we're going to get a mentorship for our uh, defensive lineman, but Mike Evans is mentoring Ricky Sawyer at the very least. We will go. I don't remember what our scheme fit is, honestly. <laughs> we'll go deep route running, I think. Yeah, we'll go deep route running. We'll give him that. That's pretty good. So plus two release, plus two deep route running for Ricky Sawyer. We might start him, honestly. We'll see. And then we do have a training camp standout. Who's this going to be? I clicked before the screen was even loaded in and it made me pick, but it's probably what I would have gone with anyways. It's plus three power moves and finesse moves for Logan Hall. I kind of had a feeling it would be Logan Hall. I will definitely take that though. He's getting lucky with all these breakouts and fucking camp standouts and everything like that. He's about to be like a 99 overall before the end of the rebuild. I mean, not actually, but like still, you know what I mean? I don't even know what I mean, but you know what I mean. <laughs> all right. I think y'all know what I'm about to say. If you have not already, be sure to subscribe. Here is a picture of my watch time based on people subscribed, meaning people watch my videos, people enjoy my videos, but they are not subscribing. So if you have not done it, you're part of the problem. <laughs> so do it. You've made it all the way here. So be sure to do it. And plus you get banger videos like these. Most of the time they are realistic, which I think people like more. I've just gotten sick of them because I've done so goddamn many. But if you want to watch a realistic one, go watch like any of the last 10, 15, 20 videos I've done, except like the very last one, the Russell Wilson one, whatever. And be sure to like the video. Let's shoot for 200 likes once again. That's the goal from now on. We've been destroying all of them. So I'm very thankful for that. I'm glad you guys have been enjoying these videos. It seriously helps me out a ton if you do it. So you listening right now, be sure to do both of those things and turn on notifications if you want to get notified whenever I upload and be one of the first people to ever watch my videos. And last thing, just let me know what team to do next. And if slash when I pick your comment, I'll give you a shout out and sub to you and all that kind of good stuff. But this is a look at the team going into year number two. It is very different from year one. I mean, what it's one, two, three, technically four, five, six, seven different starters on offense alone. I mean, eight, if you want to count fullback, but we'll, we won't count that. Like we're all rookies and just different players from year one. This team has a ton of potential. It's all like really young. The only old player on offense here is Mike Evan. And he's only what, like 30 maybe? Yeah, he's 30. Like this team is super young. Obviously we want to upgrade at running back in the off season unless Rashad White has some kind of breakout year, but that's unlikely. And then defensively, kind of the same deal as the offense. It's a lot of younger players, but there aren't too many different starters here from year one. I mean, good old CD Deuce up in here. And then what's this guy's first name? Jeff Glover. Okay. Fucking old man ass sounding name, but you know, for the most part, a very young defense. Here are the specialists. If you care about that for some reason, <laughs> I'm actually going to start Sawyer in the slot. I feel like that could be a mistake, but I hope not. But let's get into year number two and I'll see you guys at the mid season point. Unless there are any scenarios, which there probably will be. Okay, at the midseason point of year number two, we are four in three. Now, oh God, sorry, I'm disgusting, but. <laughs> I normally would be much more excited about that. However, nope, that's the wrong thing. But like, we're way ahead of schedule. We shouldn't be good yet. I would be more excited, but we started out four and one and now we're four and three. Hell, we started out three and oh, and then we won or we lost three of the last four. So we're kind of on a bad streak right now. They were all relatively close games, except for the Colts one of all teams. So we'll see, man. Something I feel, I just thought of this right now is I feel like the good overall 
overall teams should have more stompings in the schedule, like of bad teams. Because I mean, in real life, sure, you do see teams, like good teams lose to like worse teams, but you also see good teams absolutely destroy some of the like lower level teams at times. But you rarely ever see that. If you're destroying a team, a lot of the time it's like either a decent team or another good team. It's kind of confusing. I don't know, that's kind of nitpicky at this point, but it's another thing to add to the list of unrealism in this game. Joseph Shields is doing very well as a rookie. 2,200 yards, 17 touchdowns, seven, seven picks is a little high, but with everything else, you definitely take that. Rushing Rashad White is horrendous. Receiving, we are looking very good once again, maybe on pace for four 1,000 yard receivers. Defensively, oh, whoa, we only have three players with a sack and our lowest is three. That's really weird. Nobody has half of a sack. Nobody has one. Nobody has one and a half. Nobody has two. Like, that's that's weird. So it looks like our defense is letting us down this year to an extent. We are an 85 overall, so this is not a bad team. We should be doing a little better than this even, but I'll take it at this point with like a rookie QB, a rookie left tackle, not a great running back. Like, we'll definitely take that. Now for re-signings, what do we have here? Okay, Mike Evans. I was honestly expecting worse. Oh, Antoine Winfield, Shaq Mason, Devin White. Okay, they're the players. But honestly, still not even that bad. I definitely want Mike Evans back. However, he's not interested. He's gonna regress after the year. I think this is a player, unless he just takes neutral, which is unlikely, because like I said, he is not interested. But unless he takes neutral, he's definitely someone I would want to re-sign more after the year, after he regresses, and maybe some more money frees itself up. But this is about four years, about like 19 mil a year, a little over 19. Let's see if he takes it, and he doesn't, okay. Every other like super important player we're gonna have to re-sign later, or no, wait, actually I lied. We can re-sign Antoine Winfield. I definitely want him back. Unfortunately, not interested, which is a little surprising. We'll try six years, about 18-ish per year, and he doesn't want it either. Wow, this isn't a bad team at all. How about Shaq Mason? Now, hold on, how is Shaq Mason doing is the bigger question, because he's already 30, he wasn't good last year. Three sacks allowed already as a right guard? I'll pass. And then Devin White, Kenneth Murray, we would have to re-sign at the end of the year, so kind of a disappointing re-signing period, but I'm confident we'll be okay no matter what happens there. I mean, this team is a bright looking future and if there's any hole we need to fill, pause, I'm confident we can do it. But let's get to the end of year number two. So in the last video, I said it might be better to simulate game by game rather than just simming straight from like the mid season to the end of the year or like the beginning of the year straight to the mid season. Like it is definitely better to just go game by game. I don't know why, but we finished 12 and five after I did that. That is insane. You love to see it. Oh my God. Joseph Shields, the rookie quarterback finished with 5,200 yards, 40 touchdowns, only 13 picks, which is a bit high, but he is a rookie in the most pass heavy offense in the league. 68% completion percentage. This scheme is so broken. What's he up to now? I think like a 79, good Lord. I'm assuming he's gonna get a dev trait or two after the year. We'll see. Rashad White was terrible, 700 yards, 2.9 yards per carry, 12 touchdowns. 244 carries is even high for this scheme, and he only got 700 yards. 2.9 yards per carry, that's awful. But it doesn't matter, because we don't run much. I mean, I guess we did this year, but still. Mike Evans finished with 1,583 yards, 9 touchdowns. Chris Godwin, 1,306 touchdowns. Ricky Sawyer as a rookie. <laughs> I kind of hope he doesn't win Rookie of the Year over our QB, but he had 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns touchdowns as a rookie. As what, like a third round pick or something? Second round pick? I don't know. That's not too bad. And then K. Dot in 860 yards, six touchdowns. Not quite as good as last year, but still very good. Blocking. Oh my god. Zach Cummings? Goated last name and goated player? That's very fitting that Zach Cummings joins the all castration team, which if you don't know, my famous list of uh, players that don't allow a sack, you know, no sack castration. It makes sense. Zach Cummings joins joins it with the most fitting name. In a very pat, that's the most, he's officially the most impressive all 
castration team player because a he's a rookie and b this is an absurdly pass heavy system like i've said about 50 times now but it's it's relevant and also marlon sutherland was very good our whole line was really good other than foreman and i guess mason but foreman was a rookie so i'll give him a pass you know what i mean for tackles devin white led the team with 127 tackles for loss 13 from vita vea 11 from shaq barrett 10 from jeff glover as a rookie dude our rookies were absurd this is definitely the best draft class i've ever had in overalls performance dev traits everything well i don't know what their dev traits are but we at least got a lot of star or better hopefully better and then sacks shaquille but this is the shaquille barrett i expected he finished the year with 16 sacks that's very good and then vita vea with eight and a half not bad outside of that i mean we definitely did, definitely need another pass rusher joe Ch oh my god joe tryon one of our starting pass rushers ended with zero sacks not even 0 0.5 not even half he finished with zero as a starting edge rusher yep we're gonna need a need a replacement there that's for sure and then interceptions for each from devin white carlton davis two from sean murphy bunting jamel dean and one from a couple players for yearly awards do we see an mvp it goes to jalen hurts okay joseph shields as a rookie at number four we have russ this is a weird top four okay as it is most of the time to be fair <laughs> offensive rookie of the year goes to the white boy cooper cup i'm glad to be saying it again because it's funny to me for some reason it's kind of comical that he literally wins it every single year I, I don't know why he just does mike evans at number six you love to see it and of course there's the other given aaron donald wins defense or yeah defensive player there almost said defensive rookie shaquille barrett at two no i didn't think he would be so close to winning it i thought nick bosa would get like 25 sacks aaron donald probably got like 30 i don't know devin white actually up here too at number six that's interesting offensive rookie of the year unsurprisingly goes to joseph shields unfortunately we can't top two alex pierce the qb we were looking at gets number two ricky sawyer at number three no other bucks i don't really know if we had anyone else in contention in defensive rookie of the year goes to joe alberry of the lions no bucks up here really the d lineman we have was really good joe whatever what's his name hold on i need to remember jeff glover that's his name i mean i guess he didn't have that many tackles but 10 tackles for lost two sacks he did all that as like a rotational player he only had he had less than 500 snaps and did all that so i definitely won't complain but here in the playoffs of course we are going to be taking on the eight and nine chicago bears at a 79 overall i think over here yeah there are a few eight and nine teams the nfc was really really weak apparently the rams are also eight and nine the panthers are nine and eight the worst team in the afc is ten and seven and it's the buffalo bills so i i don't know but we have a first of many many scenario super quick before we jump into the bears game i almost said just jump into the bears that doesn't sound great always gotta play it cool you know what i'm saying don't want to guarantee nothing at this point it's just kind of house money you know what i'm saying we are very much ahead of schedule we're like the we're like the seahawks this year or the jags one of those teams where they're like just starting out there i mean i guess the jags have been rebuilding for like 10 years but you know what i mean we're just starting out the rebuild so if we lose it's not the end of the world we definitely should win we should go pretty far at an 87 overall but we'll see what happens let's jump in all right here we go in the wild card get those bears out of my face i don't want to look at them we are eight overall better than them and have a much better record so sure surely we won't lose surely men sim right please um we take an early seven nothing it's 14 nothing later okay they put up three but but yeah, 21 to three, we're, oh my God. 24 to three, please don't score four more points. I don't wanna look at that score. We score three more, another touchdown. Yeah, okay, this game is actually valid. Oh my God, it is 41 to three, 41 to six. At least they put up another field goal. Yeah, that's valid. We are the clear better team. So I am glad that's what the results show. I'm glad that's what the box score shows. I'm happy with that one. I saw five passing touchdowns from our quarterback. This might be one of the best quarterbacks we have ever drafted actually i mean i know it's a busted uh system i know i've said that a million times but still he's really good Ooh, and an upgrade for devin white that's actually a pretty huge upgrade if devin white could cover he might be like one of the best linebackers of all time it's just him in coverage is something you don't want to watch it's not fun <laughs> don't do don't do that to yourself huge congrats on the playoff win okay just give me my thank you i'm so mean i never care what the people have to say in this game <laughs> fuck the npcs bro 
Ooh, okay, this is a game. We're gonna be taking on the 11-6 Philadelphia Eagles. Now, they do have a better offense than us. We do have a better defense by a larger margin than their offense is better than ours, if that makes any sense. I don't even know if it made sense to myself, but I'm trying out here. We do have the better record, better overall team, and we are at home, but it is a much closer matchup than the Bears game. We have some upgrades here. Joe Tryon, Mr. Zero Sacks, and then a backup D lineman. I hope Joe Tryon can end up being better. I mean, he's not going to be a starter next year, but we'll see. But let's jump in against the Eagles. Game number two. Here we go. We're going to be taking on the Eagles in the divisional. The Buccaneers Stadium is so cool. I love the whole pirate ship and everything. It's a little corny, but it's kind of like just really cool. That and what's the one with like the pools and everything? Is that the Dolphin Stadium? Either way, we're in a playoff game. I don't know what I'm talking about. It is a 7-7 game going into the second quarter. We take a 10 10 nothing or 10-7 lead. They take it back though. 14 to 10. It's going too quick. I can't commentate this quick. They're up 21-17 right now in the fourth. We take the lead. They tie it up. We score a touchdown and they tie it. We are in overtime. They put up a touchdown. We put up a touchdown. They put up a field goal to win it. That sucks, bro. That's how it works though. Even if both teams score, if one scores right after, it just ends without giving the other team another try. That's kind of weird. Is that how it is in real life i don't know if i've ever seen a game like that with the new rules but is that what happens like the team doesn't get another chance to tie it up it's just unlucky so it's basically the same rules before rules as before just I, I don't know that's really weird to me but either way we're out of the playoffs unfortunately let's get into year number three so we were actually really unlucky with the dev traits for our players unfortunately sawyer only has star but he is up to a 76 79 with morale webster is star glow Lover is star. And is that everyone that had a dev trait? That might be it. And I hate this. Shields won rookie of the year, obviously, went up to a superstar dev, but he regressed. He went down to a 78 overall from a 79. Why does this happen? Literally, for what reason? Quarterback regression was high enough already for like older players. Like, you don't see massive drop offs from year to year for quarterbacks. There might be one big drop off for like their final year, but if they're like 33 or something, they'll regress like six overall. Quarterbacks regress much less than a player like a running back or like a receiver or a corner or something like that. Cause quarterback isn't like as athletically intensive. Unless of course you're like a scrambling QB or maybe a strong arm QB, but that's when they get really old, then it starts to matter. Or if they don't stay Stay healthy because they take too many hits like quarterback regression was already too intense before now they even if they're young they regress i don't know why it's just so weird yeah minus two throw accuracy mid short minus one short and minus three deep like that's so weird that's so weird what's what's the reasoning behind that i would love to hear it what's their thought process doing that and actually another dev up i didn't even notice barrett went up to x factor also vea hit x factor last year didn't even really mention that murphy bunting went up to superstar last year like this is a nasty roster but in the super bowl the eagles beat us just to not even get to the super bowl the 49ers make it and they lose 35 to 25 the josh mcdan nope not josh mcdaniels mike mcdaniel revenge game dolphins win it 35 25 like i said we have 66.6 mil in available salary cap that's a bad number but with that let's get to the re-signing period my chest hurts i'm not gonna lie i think I'm dying. So for re-signings, what do we want to do? It's good that we have money. Oh, Mike Evans is interested now, probably because we were good. We could probably get away with neutral. It's three years, about six, 17.2 mil, exactly 17.2 mil per year. Let's see if he takes it. And he does. Okay, beautiful. Sometimes I've had players reject a contract like that if I offer them something when they had lower uh, interest. If I offer them the same thing when they have higher interest, they'll still reject it. It doesn't really make sense. I mean, maybe, I don't know. I'm having a hard time explaining what I'm trying to say, but I think you understand. Let's re-sign Jalen Watson just because I am a biased Washington State fan, uh, just as a depth player. Thank you very much. There are some depth players I also do want to re-sign here just so we don't have to worry about it later, but these are the big boys here. Antoine Winfield, I definitely want back. He has full interest. We could definitely get away with just neutral for him. It's four years. Math is tough for me right now, man. I'm not going to lie. It's like six 
16 point something mil per year, like 16 and a half. He takes it, of course. Shaq Mason, I'm actually not going to re-sign. I might look for another lineman in free agency, but he hasn't been that good. Right guard is one of the easiest, or it's the easiest position to play on the offensive line in Madden. They typically let up the fewest amount of sacks, but he's let up a pretty decent amount, so I'm good. Devin White is really cheap, especially for being up there for defensive player of the year. Five years, about 10 per year. I'm cool with that. And then I'll also re-sign Kenneth Murray just to do it. He's still very young. At only 25, I'll re-sign him for three years. It's like next to no money. And he takes it. But with that, let's get into the offseason. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> so I'm doing the whole trade finder thing again, just because I thought it would be interesting to see what teams would offer for three players. We're trying to trade Russell Gage, Luke Godecki, Robert Hainsey. But I just, I just think this offer is really funny. The Texans offering a 70 overall and a 68 overall. I don't know about that one, Chief. I am actually pretty interested in the commander's offer. Deron Payne? That might not be too bad. I'm also interested in the Titans offer, but safety isn't necessarily a need. I don't even know if I would call defensive tackle a need, because I mean, we have Logan Hall, we have Jeff, uh, fucking whatever his last name is. I don't know. Now I remember his first name and I can't remember his last name. I'm stupid. And then obviously we have Vita Vea, so I'm not going to take any of these, any of these, but they definitely are interesting. This is actually a really interesting trade. It's going to be Russell Gage, Joe Tryon, and Luke Godecki for a first round pick from the Colts. This is more of a salary cap dump, at least that's what it was at first for Russell Gage, but these are just kind of depth players slash players that weren't good for us. <clears throat> Joe Tryon. <clears throat> but, well, I guess Luke Godecki too, but he's both. He sucked the first year and now he's a backup. So, yeah, this is just kind of three unnecessary players, basically, in a sense, getting a first round pick for free. So, I'm happy with it. <laughs> so, we're actually going to be going all offense in free agency, at least for wave one. Now, if we don't get one of these players, I might just go for like a defensive player. But the three players we're going to be going after are Elkton Jenkins, AJ Dillon, and Noah Fant. I feel like the first two are pretty self explanatory. I mean, we need a right guard. Elkton Jenkins can just slide right over. He's like the most versatile lineman in the NFL. He can literally play, I think, any position. I don't know if he's ever played left tackle for the Packers, but I'm sure he could, which is a very valuable skill to have. I mean, obviously, well, I guess it's not obvious. It might actually be the opposite for some people. It is apparently incredibly hard for a lineman to switch like sides on the offensive line, which makes sense because imagine like a good comparison I thought of is like imagine riding with your right hand for your whole life and then just being like, oh, hey, I'm going to start riding with my left hand. Like you would literally have to flip everything you've been doing for like your whole life pretty much I, I don't know that's it's kind of a weird comparison but it made it makes sense in my head I don't know so it's a very valuable skill and it's I guess realistic this isn't a realistic rebuild so I'm not too worried about that I don't know if I would be even if it was a realistic rebuild but yeah we're gonna move him to right guard assuming we get him so he should be great there AJ Dillon is gonna be the next player we're going for another former Packer obviously we need help at running back I don't know what I just clicked okay and he plays pretty well at least from what I saw so that's pretty fun I don't want to have to withdraw so I can check how he did again to show y'all but he had like 1100 yards like 4.4 yards per carry he was pretty good and then Noah Fant is actually going to be an upgrade at tight end I think he would be really fun in this offense I think if Noah Fant was used right and used more often he could be like one of the better tight ends in the league not that the 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 Seahawks don't use him super well but I feel like with his athleticism if used perfectly, he could be like amazing and he's going to be a really good kind of vertical threat here. So that'll be fun, of course, assuming we get him. So let's see if either of these three players sign right off the bat. And unfortunately, the only one to sign is going to be AJ Dillon. I mean, that's still a big get, but I wish more players signed. We'll withdraw from Noah Fant and up it a little bit because I mean, obviously, I do want to get him. Oh, that's like a full offer. OK, cool. Oops, I didn't mean to. Fuck, I'm stupid. Hold on. I'll get this right eventually. Give me a second. <laughs> okay, there we go. I did a little bit of uh, moving around of contracts. 
I don't know how I actually did that because it didn't even cost that much more money, but now we have the lead for both players. I I don't know, it's fucking weird, but we'll see if either of these two sign Noah Fent and Elkton Jenkins. Both of them sign, they both sign with us. That is massive. This offense is now ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, bruh, just look at this shit. We literally do not have a single hole on the offense. You love to see it. So in the draft, Arizona actually has the number one pick, but we don't give a shit about that. That doesn't really affect us one way or another. We actually have back-to-back -back picks. That's interesting how that worked out. 26 is the Colts pick, I believe? Or wait, who? Wait, did we trade with the Colts? Is that? I remember offering the Colts something. Is that what we, is that what we did? I'm stupid. I should remember this. I'm just a dumbass. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was Indianapolis. So yeah, this is the Colts pick. And then right after that is our pick. But either way, they're both ours. So it doesn't really matter at all. But I definitely do want a pass rusher with this pick. None of them are available though. God damn it. I did fully scout this guy. He had two A's, but he is dog shit. Sadly, neither of them are actually A's. What do we want to do then? Because I mean, this scheme uses a speed rusher. We definitely want a speed rusher. Is this guy good? Another lefty, bro. He's listed as a, wait, is he actually listed as a speed? He is. He is, what? He has D finesse moves. This guy must be awful or something. I don't know. I genuinely don't know what to do with this pick because our one need is like a good speed rusher and there just isn't one available, we could go with a power rusher, dude. I mean, if we're that desperate, either that or I might just trade this pick for a player. This dude looks like shit. <laughs> Why do all the pass rushers have no pass rush moves? I do not trust that A to C and B to D. I do not trust those. I might take him day three, but that'll be day three, not yet. JP Donnell, you know, this guy doesn't look too bad, actually. B power moves, B hit power, that doesn't really matter. I, I don't know. I think I'm actually gonna try to trade this pick for a player that might have to be the move let's see what we can do hold on can you can you trade finder a pick let me see there are no tra oh okay no you can't what if i throw a player in there <laughs> can you do that what if i throw like kyle trask in there no okay it just doesn't know what to do with picks i guess i don't know so actually something i didn't even consider is we are broke now from obviously all the free agency stuff so i don't even think we could trade for anybody if we wanted to but i don't know what to do with this pick pick. This is such a weird situation to be in. I've never, I've never had this predicament before. Like genuinely, I can't trade for anybody because we're broke and there's just nobody for us to pick at our one position of need. I mean, it's not a terrible position to be in because we don't have any needs, like I said, but I just don't know what to do. I guess the best we can do is go for like our second biggest need, which is probably interior defensive lineman. So let's go Devonte Anthony. He actually looks really good. He's 6'3", 308, 21 years old out of South Carolina, 41 reps on the bench, and that was only third. We're in a five flat at the Combine Elite, strength and acceleration, B awareness, finesse moves, tackle, A play rec, maybe good pursuit and block shedding. I don't know. Let's take him. Hidden dev, 94 strength. This guy looks really good. So at the very least, I think we're getting a good player with our pick. I missed the thing where it said where this player is ranked in the draft. You know what I mean? Like blank is the number 24 ranked out of 456 players or however many are in the classes. I don't know. Oh my, why are there so many safeties? What the fuck is this? I mean, this dude looks really nice. I'm not gonna lie. We just, our last need is probably safety. We are, we're already three deep with starters, but he does look good. I'm not gonna lie. I think we might go Roman Gordon here. He has a spec catch, a deep route, F medium route, which is really odd. We're in a 439 at the combine, 438 at his pro day. I have no idea what to do with this pick. I'm just gonna take him. Hidden dev 94 speed might be a good player might be a 62 overall i have no idea i just don't know what to do with these picks man out of stanford maybe he's smart i don't know hopefully he doesn't retire like andrew luck but that's a weird comparison he's not a court I, I don't know what the fuck is charleston southern i have never heard of that should i just start taking desperation picks i'm gonna brandon capers 21 years old. This is the speed rusher with the deadly D finesse moves. I don't understand what this player is. I don't know what else to do though, man. I don't I don't know, man. I'm gonna fucking start crying and shit, man. Let's go Brandon Capers. Let's do it. Normal dev. Who would have guessed? 64 speed? 
Er, strength as a linebacker? My brother in Christ, you're going to die. You need some muscle. Wearing number 94 as like a fucking, like, cover line- I mean, I guess he's not a cover linebacker, because he's listed as a speed- This dude's confusing. I do not understand him. What are you? I mean, I guess you can make the argument that he's one of those, like, Trenton Simpson type of players, like, hybrid for multiple positions, but also he has 64 strength, so I have no idea what he is. I'm just gonna start taking, like, these random- Day three players. Let's start with Trey Pagan, I guess. Nah, he looks like shit. I don't know. Let's go Demir Barton, 468 at the combine. A to C finesse moves. I like the B awareness. That's promising. Let's take him. Normal dev, of course. I, I don't know. This is just a weird draft, dude. Well, clearly this draft class wasn't quite to the same quality as the last one. It's mostly because we made a lot of desperation picks, but we literally just didn't have anything else to take. Now, if this was real life, this would be a terrible way to draft, but we'll get to that in a second. Devon Monte Anthony, 94 strength, 80 or 78 play rec, 78 tackle. I tried to say 87. I wish. Apparently, I have dyslexia. I don't know. 71 speed, looking pretty hot. Not gonna lie. I don't know why hot was my word of choice, uh, but it, it it was. I will tell you that. Roman Gordon is a 75 overall, 59 short king out here, 199 pounds. Er, yeah, 100 no 189 pounds. Whatever. 94 speed, good deep route. Wait, he's one of these players. Holy shit. I don't know why I'm going to edit stats. You could literally just see it from there. But he has good old 99 spec catch. Makes no sense. I don't even know if there's anybody in the league that has 99 catch, so it's not realistic. Or 99 spec catch, so it's not realistic. Maybe like, I don't know, Devontae Adams or something. But we'll definitely take it. And then here's our mess of attempted pass route. Uh, fucking 56 overall. That's super fun. I don't know how he's so bad. Like, he has really good speed speed or he has really good excel decent speed is he like an offensive play what the fuck are you he's just not really necessarily good at anything <laughs> it's mean but it's kind of the truth like what is he i don't know man i guess the best pass rusher we took was a whole 68 overall demir barton 82 speed 85 excel 77 finesse so he i would say he's probably gonna start but we're definitely gonna try to trade somebody or trade for somebody so let's get into the third and final year of the rebuild this has been a certainly interesting one. So just a small little trade here. We're going to be trading Kenneth Murray for this Tolik guy from the Commanders. He's like a 73. Well, he is a 73 overall. He's not like a 70. He he is a 73 overall, but he has star dev. He is a power rusher. So for our scheme, it's not an exact fit, but it's better than a 68 overall normal dev rookie. So we'll definitely take that. I want maybe another one. We'll see. But for now, that's what we're going to get. Here is a look at the team going into the third and final year of the rebuild. This is going to be the final year no matter what. We've already made the playoffs, but this team is disgusting, honestly. I mean, there's legitimately not a single hole on the offense. We have three players at 90 plus overall. Noah Fant at an 85, Shields at a 79, AJ Dillon out here. The O-line is looking really good. This is an elite offense, and defensively, we're arguably better? Well, I guess not, but we have a very good defense as well. We have three X-Factors in Levante, David, Shaq, Barrett, Vita Vea. Our only hole is pass rush, but we'll see what Tolik, Jose Tolik, can do here. 72 overall obviously has the star dev, so you never know. He could be good, and if he isn't by the midseason point, I might throw the rookie we drafted in there. Demir Barton. We'll, we'll just see what happens, man. Of course, we still have Antoine Winfield, Jamel Dean, studs like them. Devin White's been really good. This team is just disgusting. So let's get to the midseason. Er, let's get straight to the end of year number three and let's see how we can do. Okay, this is like some flashback shit to last year. We finished 12 and 5 once again. Once again, are taking on the Bears, who are slightly better this time, you know. 9 and 8, I guess, is technically better than 8 and nine but not much and in week 18 we took on the eagles who obviously beat us in the divisional last year so just some deja vu shit here but of course if you have not for some reason already be sure to like and subscribe it's so easy for you to do again 2000 subs 200 likes the lucky twos or whatever i don't know and i will be very much happy if we hit those if you do it we will hit it if everybody did it we would be at like 4000 subs 1500 likes it would be ridiculous so be sure to do it it's super easy for 
for you to do, and I would appreciate it a ton. And of course, let me know what team to do next for a shout out and turn on notifications if you want to be one of the first people to ever see my videos. Any of that helps me out, but I would very much appreciate if you did all of it. Takes like 30 seconds. But this team is like disgusting. Honestly, Joseph Shields is up to an 83 overall superstar dev, 87 with morale. He looks ridiculous. We have Tristan Wirfs playing up to a 99. The offense in general is amazing. And then defensively, we are also amazing. Vita Vea up to a 97 with his morale. Winfield and Dean up to a 93. Both of our middle linebackers are playing up to an 88. Even Tolik is playing up to a 78, 75 base. This team is really, really good. I actually do want to check something out of curiosity. I want to check a couple things. What is Devontae Anthony's dev trait? Probably star, but if it's superstar, I'm going to regret not starting him. Okay, it's just star. I'm cool with that. And how about the receiver we drafted? He might have a really good dev trait, actually. Maybe not. He didn't develop much, but yeah, maybe not. No, he just has star. Okay, I'm fine with not starting either of them, honestly. We're good enough as is. But let's see how this team did. Joseph Shields was a monster once again, even better than last year. 5,300 yards, 43 touchdowns, 12 picks, 69% completion percentage. Nice. He is amazing. AJ, oh my god. <laughs> AJ Dillon, 1,100 yards, 4.4 yards per carry, 25 touchdowns. Now you already know, I've said this before many times, rushing touchdowns are mid, it just shows that you get the ball at the goal line, it's not hard to get like two yards, I mean I guess it can be if they're like ready for it, but just depends, but 25 is kind of ridic ridiculous, he only got 498 snaps, that's really weird, Rashad White got more than him, were, were we playing him as a receiver or something? I mean if we were, he didn't get many catches, I, I don't know dude, that's weird. Chris Godwin, though, 1,700 yards, 14 touchdowns. Mike Evans, 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Ricky Sawyer, 1,000 yards, 7 touchdowns. Even Noah Fant, 970 yards, 8 touchdowns. Very good passing year and rushing year. Blocking, oh, this is like a line. These are like offensive line stats that we would have for like a run-heavy scheme, not a pass one. Byron Foreman, Byron Foreskin was amazing. Zach Cummings, much worse than last year. Tristan Wirfs is a god. Marlon Sutherland is a god. Elkton Jenkins was fine. Devin White, once again, for like the third year in a row now, leads the league, in, or leads our team in tackles. He did lead the league in tackles in our first year, but 133 for him. 22 tackles for loss for Logan Hall. 16 for Vita Vea and sacks. 11 and a half from Vita Vea, out sacking Shaquille Barrett, who had 10 and a half. Five for Jose Tolik, which isn't great, but it's five more than Joe Tryon had, so that's an upgrade there. Jeff Glover with only three? It's kind of weird. In interceptions, Devin White is so good in this game. Oh my god. I mean, he allowed 73 catches, which is some of the highest numbers I've ever seen, but still. Four interceptions for him, two each from Carlton Davis, Amani or Warrior, that's weird, and Sean Murphy Bunting, and then one each from a few players. So, very good year. 6,991 6 yards. Nice of offense. 6,600 allowed for defense, so we were 28th. That's not great. First in points scored. Our defense wasn't all that good, though. 13th in points allowed. It's not terrible, but I think we have the best defensive roster in the league by far, probably. Mahomes wins MVP for, what, the third year in a row now? Or no, I think Jalen Hurts won it last year. Joseph Shields at number three. He is amazing in this game. Jamal McCoy. I don't understand quarterback f or, like, face scans, because did they, like, switch them? Because I've never seen that face scan for a QB. I said that in the last video, too. They must have switched them or something. Le what? Lamar on the Patriots? I don't know about that one. Two on the Falcons. That's interesting. That's a weird list. <laughs> Offensive player of the year for the third year in a row goes to the white boy Cooper Cup. There could have been a chance that Chris Godwin got it, but Cooper Cup is literally a demon in this game for whatever reason i mean he's good in real life obviously but god damn i don't know if he should win offensive player of the year every year no other buccaneers up here in defensive player of the year who would have guessed aaron donald whatever that one's more realistic he wins a lot of defensive player of the years devin white at number eight offensive rookie of the year goes to jd greer i did see him at the top of the board he was one of the qbs but obviously don't need a qb roman gordon at number eight the receiver and that's it 
Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Justin Delgado of the Rams. Okay, nobody up there. I guess we didn't have a rookie start, but I thought there might be a depth piece there, but it's fine. I don't care. What I do care about is this playoff game. <laughs> now, we should destroy the Bears like we did last year. We have eight overall on them. We have the better record. We're overall better. We have a weak link. I said it right that time. You guys better be proud of me. I used to say wink link. I don't know why. I'm just stupid, as I always say. We definitely want to, let's go, uh, let's go force turnovers. I think we can get some turnovers on that Bears offense. But let's jump in against the Bears and let's see if we can get a win. We destroyed them last year. Let's see if we can do it again. Here we go in the wild card against the Bears. I'm a little more nervous for this one because I mean, there's more to lose. This is the last year, but hopefully our team isn't nervous. The Bears immediately go up seven, nothing. We tie it up though. We get the ball and we go up 14, seven. They, they do put up three. We put up another three they do tie it up going into half though we get a field goal i thought that was a touchdown without the extra point now we get a touchdown we're up 27 17 30 17 this one is closer than the last one did we get a safety i think we got a safety on him and then we put up a field goal so we do end up kind of destroying them again but that one definitely felt closer than the last one for most of the game that one definitely could have gone either way so i'm glad we won you know i will say for all the shit i give madden the sim does seem more centered around overall in the playoffs for some reason. I don't know why that is. It should honestly kind of be the opposite, but I won't be too, I, I won't complain too much when Madden's being decent in some regard. <laughs> you take what you can get. Oh, and we have a recap for the weak link. I mean, it seems like we definitely got at least a turnover, probably two. Any additional thoughts? Okay, let's see. Really proud. Oh, okay. I think we hit it. Plus five morale. Okay. I was hoping it would be XP, but honestly, that's probably better. Plus five morale. You love to see it. Ooh. Ooh, in the divisional, we're going to be taking on the New York Giants. We are still a much better team. We still have five overall on them, two more wins than them, but they are definitely better than the Bears. They're not better than the Eagles that we took on last year and lost to, but they are definitely better than the Bears, so it's kind of kind of worrying. We'll see. Why do we have a 67 overall kicker? That's probably part of the problem. <laughs> but let's jump in against the Giants and let's see what we can do. Here we go in the divisional. Good close-up of Mikey McDingle there. I love the camera time Mikey McDingle's getting. I mean, he's our goat, you know what I'm saying? Gotta push that agenda. Mikey McDingle for best coach of all time, NFL Hall of Fame, I'm down. I don't know about y'all, but like he's a, he's like at least a five, 10 times Super Bowl champion at this point with all the rebuilds, you know what I mean? Like he's kind of the goat. He's like at that Bill Belichick level, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but let's see what we can do here against the Giants. I don't know, I'm not too confident. Like I said in the last one, we are down 7-3. We take the lead 10 to seven. Not much scoring going on in this game especially compared to the last one it's a very much defensive battle here which is interesting the giants tie it up we put up 10 points in a second and then we put up another seven the giants do go down and score but we put up another three this is a weird team we're playing really close and then something weird will happen and we just kind of pull away i don't really understand it but i will definitely take it oh you know probably because i have obs studio and streamlabs obs and madden and like 20 chrome tabs and fucking discord for some dude i'm kind of stupid sometimes i wonder why it's fucking lagging dude jesus ew <laughs> this is the this is the conference championship team the arizona cardinals at a 78 overall i think this is the biggest playoff gap we've ever had we have 11 overall let me repeat that 11 overall over the cardinals um you know i guess they're here for a reason because they've been winning but they shouldn't be at nine and eight so they shouldn't even be nine and eight this didn't they just have the number one pick how how are they here what is their roster do they still have kyler i would guess they still have kyler yeah it looks like they have a good rookie receiver i guess that helps i mean they do have a really good receiving core and if you think about it think of the two super bowl teams last year the Bengals and the rams what did they have? They had loaded receiving cores. The Bengals, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, even Auden Tate, the Rams, Cooper Cup, Odell, Van Jefferson. They had another one that I'm forgetting. I should remember. Why don't I remember? But both teams had really strong receiving cores, and they had a really good number one receiver. Obviously, the Cardinals, D-Hop. So it doesn't really make sense because this team kind of blows, but it also has a really good receiving core, which definitely helps 
Oh my god, their D-line. Their whole front seven. Holy shit. What is this team, dude? Their corners. This team is so ass. We're gonna lose for me talking all this shit, but like, we shouldn't. This team is terrible. But let's jump into the conference championship against Arizona, I guess. Let's get ready for a loss. Oh yeah, the Rams had Robert Woods. That's who I was thinking of. I guess he didn't really play most of the season. He was hurt. I still feel like there was another one, but still. You get my point. Here we go. In the conference championship, I always forget their stadium is called Raymond James Stadium. It makes me think of Ray J, which is, you know, a thought, I guess. It definitely is a thought. You can't deny that. Like your mother for me. That was a weird job. I'm just kind of speaking at this point. Let's <laughs> let's sim this out. I hope we crush them, but we'll probably lose. The Cardinals go up 3-0. We put up three as well. Is this just going to be a f No, we put up a touchdown. Okay. The Cardinals are driving. They put up a field goal. We drove, but we didn't score. We drove twice and didn't score. They put up a touchdown. We put up a touchdown. 17-13 Buccaneers. They put up a field goal. We still have the lead. Did we win? That was scary. We put up a field goal at the end. We should have gone for a touchdown there, honestly. We were like right in the red zone. And we were just like, yeah, a field goal with like a minute left. That's fine. But it was fine, surprisingly. Zero, <laughs> zero passing touchdowns. This really was a field goal battle. I called it. How do we have zero passing touchdowns? That's all we do. All we do is pass. Joe if Shields wasn't that good, uh, it wasn't even that good of a rushing game for you. What did wh what were these offenses doing? Oh my god, not even any. Did anybody play in this game? Zaven Collins got 14. To this is a weird game. There were like no stats for anybody. We'll just forget that one ever happened. We won. Let's get out of here. Let's get to the Super Bowl. I'll take a win, but what is this? This is a weird rebuild. Every one of my rebuilds are weird, but they progressively get weirder and weirder as we go. We'll speak of the devil quite literally because I mean they had Andy Dalton who is a ginger we're gonna be taking on the Cincinnati Bengals uh, obviously I was just talking about them because I was saying their receiving core is loaded I see Jamar Chase at a 96 overall apparently at 1300 yards but I never know because sometimes those will glitch and it'll say like fucking Devonte Adams had third or like 28 sacks 17 tackle like it glitches sometimes and shows the stats from the last week it's stupid but it's one of the many millions of glitches in this game unsurprisingly also i'm sorry if you're a ginger <laughs> nothing personal <laughs> whenever i think of the Bengals, though i just think of that one fucking meme of joe burrow all kind of like condensed like crushed down holding a football like his rookie photo or whatever saying clearly you don't own an air fryer my humor is so stupid <laughs> That's so funny to me, I don't know why. I feel sleep deprived, even though I'm not. Anyways, we have some upgrades here. I'm sorry. I'm ter- I, I don't know why I'm apologizing and calling myself stupid so much. I guess this is the Brandon the Simp masochism era, but did I even say the right name for my- Yeah, I did. Okay. Cool, we have some upgrades. Zion McCollum, who I love in real life. I thought he was an incredibly underrated player. Has- played this year looked terrible, but he's a developmental player, okay? And we have a Super Bowl media day. It's gonna be the, what does this game mean to you? How do you feel? I'll be your therapist, even though you didn't ask for it. It's literally everything, because this is the last game of the rebuild. I almost sim the week on accident, but let's jump in against the Bengals, and let's see if we can take them down. I hope the game doesn't lag, but it probably will. Why does Patrick Mahomes look so shitty? Like, the cutout, especially around his hair, looked shitty. It's gone now, but still. Like, whoever trimmed that did kind of a weird job but whatever here we go in the Super Bowl against Cincinnati back to another Super Bowl after a few years same with the Buccaneers back to another Super Bowl after a few years this was uh my Super Bowl Super Bowl Super Bowl prediction for last year. I thought it would be Bengals Buccaneers instead it ended up being Bengals Rams, but I was clo I was close, you know. But here we go in the Super Bowl. The Bengals are the first to score putting up 7. We put up 3, 7-3 seven, three Bengals. They put up another or they put up 3. We put up another 3. It is now 10-6 Bengals going into half. We put up another 3. Apparently we just don't like touchdowns. They're up 17 to 9. It's not looking great for us. They put up another touchdown. We just can't score, man. And they beat us. So ironically, the thing that was going so well for us ended up biting us in the end. Joseph Shields has been really bad the last couple games. No touchdowns, one pick. Rushing, Rashad White. Why were we giving him the ball and not AJ Dillon? AJ Dillon had six yards per carry. Rashad White had one yard per carry. What are we doing? Jamar Chase destroyed us. Literally almost the 
the top three receivers for the game were all Bengals, if not for Ricky Sawyer the GOAT. That's a depressing game. I feel like that was very winnable. We just did stupid stuff. But of course, that is the end of today's rebuild. We see Joseph Shields up to an X Factor now. Doesn't really deserve it, but he has it. But of course, if you did enjoy, be sure to like, sub, turn on notifications. All three of those help me out a ton. And you know, if, you, if you've made it all the way here, clearly you, you enjoy my videos, so you might as well do it. One last look at the defense as well. Logan Hall up to Superstar. You love to see that. 90 overall team. This team is nasty. But of course, let me know what team to do next for a shout out. 200 likes, 2,000 subs, and I will be very happy. But as always, I will see you guys again in the next video. Goodbye.